Hey everyone, um, I haven't done a video like this in a little while, um, but this is the Rosewell case with a EVGA 850BQ, the Gigabyte GA7 T, or, uh, GA7 PESH2, the socket 2011 motherboard, and we have dual E5 2620s, uh, they're six core processors, um, I've got everything enabled, everything kind of default, running the balanced power profile on Windows and um, I have the GPU locked in at 1.0 volts on stock speeds and it's a GTX 1080. Um, so we're going to do some power testing and what I'm going to do is I'm going to run some tests, see what, see what it does under um, synthetic load and see what it does under um, you know some gaming and stuff like that and just kind of see what the average power usage is. Right now, I don't know if you can see, I tried to set up the camera best I can. We've got the kilowatt right up here, and hopefully it comes through on the camera, but we're sitting in about 180 idle, um, and the only thing that's plugged into that is the server. So, um, another thing to note, we're running 16 DIMMs of DDR3 ECC registered, and it's the standard 1.5 volt uh, and they're four gig sticks. So you could reduce the power by running DDR3L. And um, let's see what else we got in here. We got two EVGA CLC 11s, 120 millimeter uh, liquid coolers with three 120 millimeter fans, two 80s in the back. And we have a four terabyte hard drive and a 128 SSD. So it's a pretty basic server setup with the exception of the GPU that's in here. And as Windows is now completely started up, um, our power usage has dropped down to 165-ish. Um, so that's not too bad. Honestly, I think a lot of it's coming from the GPU um, because I do have it locked in at 1.0 volts so it doesn't throttle down. Um, our temps are looking really good, especially with these uh, liquid coolers. And we're looking at about... I have it up on the screen. Maybe you won't. You're not able to see it. We're running at 32 Celsius on both processors, and uh, our max haven't even hit 40 yet. So let's see how it does. We're gonna run some IDA 64, uh, fully synthetic, and we'll see if it uh, see what happens to the power usage and to temps as well. So it looks like we're leveling off at about 280 watts. Um, that's really not awful. If you're running a synthetic load like this, this is 100% max on all cores. You're definitely going to be using a lot more power than you would if you're just doing transcoding with Plex or you're encoding some Blu-rays or something like that. In those situations, you're not going to be using, um, you know, full out 100%. And I think. Yeah, it's starting to ramp up the memory usage as well, but I don't imagine that's going to change the um, the power usage at all. So we're looking at about 40 Celsius right now under full load, and that's going to climb slowly, but it will reach an equilibrium point. And as you can hear, hopefully you can hear, it's very, very quiet. I don't have any other uh, systems running in this room right now, just the camera and uh, this box. And I have the of course, I had the lid open as well, so um, you know you're you're gonna be able to hear everything from through the open space. 
I think most of the noise is coming from the power supply and the GPU. So if you get a different GPU or you change your fan profile a little bit, um, then it'll be a bit quieter. And so one of the things I want to look at, uh, this is going to be, this video is just going to be on the 850BQ. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap it for a 1000 watt gold power supply. And now I know it's going to be a little bit different because the efficiency ratings, uh, it, it matters how many watts you have and also the efficiency rating. Um, so the 80 plus gold matters and the fact that it's 1000 watts is going to be a little bit different. But hopefully it'll illustrate a little bit what the power draw difference is at the wall, running the same test on the same exact system. Um, and it's probably not going to be a whole lot. I'm going to say it right now. Uh, I think, you know, if we're running 280 right now, maybe we'll look at like 265 or 260. Uh, if it's much less than that, I'm going to be very, very surprised. But I don't think it will be. Um, so yeah, it, sometimes it's worth getting the extra, you know, gold PSU or platinum PSU if you can get a good deal. But a lot of times 80 plus bronze is totally fine. Um, I would definitely try to get something 80 plus rated if you can, but uh, other than that, I mean, it's, I don't think it's that big of a deal, but we'll see in either the later part of this video, I don't know if I'll do it, I don't know if I'll swap it live, um, I might just cut the video and then upload another video with the 1000 watt gold, and you can do a comparison between the two. So it looks like we're um, pretty rock solid at 280 watts, or yeah, 280 watts, and peak temps on processor zero uh, looks like the highest core is 43 celsius and the highest on processor one is about 42 celsius and it's like i said it's going to climb a little bit but you know it's not too big of a deal so i'm going to stop this test and it's running completely stable by the way max turbo on both processors um, so that's super awesome and you can barely feel any heat coming out of the radiators. These CLCs are way overkill for for what we need, especially with these. Looks like steam froze up, so I'm gonna have to close that and reopen it. And so for those of you that are running headless uh, and you're not running a GPU, you'll be able to save quite a bit of power. Um, I think this 1080 is pulling about 50 to 70 watts at idle. I can imagine that you, you could easily get this down to about 100 or 110 watts at idle uh, with this same setup. And even lower if you're using DDR3L and fewer sticks. Um, so let's look at, we'll try Hitman and see if we can just run the benchmark on that. And uh, obviously the the wattage is going to vary a lot more with this as it renders different scenes. I apologize for the slow load times. I have this on the hard drive, not on the solid state. So these processors aren't ideal for gaming, but you know, I, it's what I have around right now. I might do some testing later with some higher end processors if I get some. Um, but honestly, this is my play around box. This isn't my. This isn't going in my rack, um, at least not anytime soon. So, it is what it is. But it's kind of a weird mismatch of hardware. I, I wouldn't recommend using a GTX 1080 with 2620s. You definitely need uh, something higher clock speed, uh, because right now it's just bottlenecking the 1080 insanely. Um, it's only like 2.6 turbo or 
2.3 turbo, something like that. But um, yeah, you can see the minim minimum FPS dipped down to five. I think that was just in a scene transition, but we're, we're averaging 52 FPS. Looks like uh, we hit about 300 watts, which is honestly not that bad. Um, so yeah, we're about 297 right now. 310. So we'll call it right there. I don't need to run the whole benchmark. And see if we can open Tomb Raider real quick and see if that does anything different. And then uh, I will swap out the power supplies. And uh, see if we can go from there. And if you have questions about power draw and how this works and, and uh, why a lot of the times I only recommend a 450 or 550 for even dual socket boards, um, feel free to ask. Remember that the power supply is rated at 850 watts peak and that's at this end of the power supply and we're measuring this end of the power supply so there's some efficiency loss there so if you're pulling 850 here uh, on your system side you can add you know maybe it's pulling 950 at the wall which is what we're measuring on the kilowatt we're gonna run default settings on the benchmark um, yeah so a lot of times if uh, if you're looking at wattage and you're like, oh man, I'm pulling 850 at the wall and there's, you know, it's an 850 power supply or I'm pulling 800 at the wall and I'm really close to my limit. Uh, just remember that you're probably pulling a significant amount less at this end of the power supply. So you do have a little bit more headroom. 360 watts peak. It's quite a bit. Looks like this game is definitely GPU bound and doesn't require as much from the CPU. Um, we were hitting 140 something FPS there. So every game is different and uh, this is why I don't do a whole lot of game testing. Um, and you can game on these just fine and if you want to look at any of that information um, I have a $115 Xeon gaming build guide and it's a sweet little system. but. You just got to know what you're getting into and know the limitations and uh, figure out if it's right for you or not. But it looks like 360 was the highest. Um, 367, 370. And you see we're seeing some texture pop in there. And that's just because of the hard drive for the most part. And it could be a little bit of the CPU just being slower clock speed. But um, I, like I said, I, I have everything on a single hard drive right now. Uh, so it's going to be running a bit slower. And I think that'll wrap it up for this video. Um, so we, we're looking at about 280 watts on pure CPU. Uh, obviously the GPU is still running. I, I'm not letting the GPU down clock. And um, maybe about 160 watts idle. So 160 watts idle. 100, or uh, excuse me. What did I say? Uh, 160 watts idle, like 280 with pure CPU, and about 310 on Hitman, and about 370 on Tomb Raider. So we will swap the power supply, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.